You're getting two dudes talking about whatever they want to talk about. Sort of. Podcast! We're back, everyone. After one month, <laughs> we were actually going to record in January, and then uh, a COVID scare and some shenanigans later, and we ended up in February. Yeah. So here we are, February. We're trying to make a point. We don't always have time on our side. We're trying to make a point to actually record a couple of episodes, like, back-to-back. Mm-hmm. Um if we have the ability to, uh, specifically when we're talking about tobacco and things, or some of these other little segments or experiments that we're doing. That way that there is something that's coming out on a sort of regular interval. Yes, I think we've started to figure out some of our scheduling conflicts, but with this pandemic, it, you know, I mean, clearly, like, we don't want to spread it to one another, and, you know, you, you sort of practice... Like, so you don't end your life, but you practice certain things, making sure you're tested, making sure that, like, you're not coming in contact with people who have it. Um, I'm basically a shut in, so you know, and Same I think here. Patrick is too. So, mm-hmm. he and I really don't have that, but like, there's been I do go into my office, uh, to work occasionally, and you know, you'll get an email like, were you this close to someone on such and such day? And you're like, yeah, I think I saw them. And they're like, okay, well, go home and, <laughs> you know, blah, blah, blah. And since I didn't want to spread anything to my parents or, you know, definitely not to my folks, like, you know, I just ended up ended up in a position where I really couldn't record last mm-hmm. month. And you can ask Patrick, who, who got an earful about me being just completely aggravated. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been more mad at that whole situation because yeah. it, it was like I was really ready to record because it seemed like we were keeping pace pretty good and that happened and I, I don't think I've ever been more aggravated about that granted you do the right thing but yeah yeah every just, time I was really irritable about it yeah it, it, you know of course I was as you know upset about it but you know again it, it, you know I wouldn't upset at you of course but Part of me was like, well, you know, this is how it happened last year, right? We, our last season, you know, we, we were going strong, doing it once a month, and then boom, January happened. And it wasn't anything crazy. It was just, you know, I was out of, I was out of the country, things happened, and then we just, it fell by the wayside, right? And uh, Well, there was a lot of stuff going on to that. This is yeah. when Patrick and I worked together. Mm-hmm. He left the country. We had a really crazy job that we were working on. Yes. Where we had, like, you know, you had acquired, like, what, 10 people underneath you or something like that? Yeah. And then I had another 20-some-odd people to deal with mm-hmm. um, in different states and stuff. It just, that job got really, 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 like, rough for a hot minute. Where if you're, you know, I was Patrick's manager. And uh, I never wanted to be a manager, but we don't have to get into that. <laughs> and, uh, and then it just got, it just was particularly complicated because you have to like sort of make sure everything's running as smooth as possible. And while you don't have to worry about Patrick, you also can't stop him from leaving the country. So it's like, you know, you, you end up taking on <laughs> a lot of aggravating responsibility. Yeah. But But then I get back and then that's sort of when all this pandemic happened, started. So we it, actually didn't think you were going to make it back. No, yeah. Uh, it, which, if I was calling the shots, I wouldn't have been back, at least for a little bit. But luckily, we made it in. Everything was fine. And, you know, whatever. But but needless to say, Pipecast fell by the wayside for a little bit. Right. And so when, when, when it got to looking like January wasn't going to happen, I was like, no, no, no. We, we, we can't do this. Like, we got to double down. In February. Um, and I think you've noticed that. Uh, this is sort of segueing into like a public service announcement in a way. We're officially on YouTube because all of our episodes in the past are loaded on YouTube. Now, again, they're still just audio, you know. But we're there if YouTube's more your thing. Um, but like I was saying, I'm saying that because, you know, I got a little antsy. I started posting a little bit of other stuff in January. Uh, some other little content which we will continue to do we'll post little things here and there that's something different 
than our normal episodes. We're sort of expanding in a way. Trying different things out. Yeah. And of course, you know, we'll know if it's good or not based on, you know, how you take it. Now, granted, we're going to keep doing what we're going to do because it's fun to hang out. But, but either way, you know, that's, that's sort of how this is going to go. Um, so we, we hope that you find us. I think right now the, the YouTube channel name is Pipecast by Rivermont Studios. So if you just want to YouTube that, you can find all of our old videos and you can find some other little special content and some new content that we're going to start be, start putting out. We do have a couple of segments that are going to be really tobacco specific. Mm-hmm. I don't actually think we'll be talking about much of anything other than just specific tobaccos. Um, we might have to tweak it a little bit for certain things because there are some reviews that I'd like to double back on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but these are these are sort of a review like style. Mm-hmm. Um, we just want to keep that that tobacco content coming out because I guess to be transparent in a way, there is a there's a difference right so when you when you get on if you're just talking about the medium of youtube right and specifically the pipe the tobacco and pipe community there's different there's almost different realms to it right you got people who are very um it's almost like a television show people like stuff and things right it's you know it's produced it's for yeah sure. it's produced but then you have this great, huge community that that's really the YTPC, right? So it's sort of like Bradley is above, not above, but like he is separate from. He's, you know what? You, know, you may not agree with this. He is like the politician who represents the, com- the community at large, but he's not the community, though. He is something different. It's like, you know, like what we talked about before. When you start representing the community, you become less from the community. Mm-hmm. Less, and that's him. I don't consider him to be an actual YTPC community member like these other people, like Pipe, the Pipe Nook, Unicorn Piper, um, uh, Cane Rod Piper. Back when Matches was was with us, um, people like that. Uh, Bremen. Uh, there's a there's a lot of people. Public Piper to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, Holy Smoking Pipe Padre. Yeah, he came out in that early wave. You know, yeah. Who did um, stuff and things? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he came out an early wave where you yeah. had like CHS Pipe Friend and Pipe Lawyer and some of those mm-hmm. characters. Um, Match has been around for a lot, long time. There Sergeant a, Seven Ellie. Sergeant Seven Ellie. Uh, Bruno, but not the not the like the guru. Not, like, not the not the Sultan. No, but this other character named Bruno, who I think was Spanish. His, and he, he did his in English, much like Bremen does. And um, Holy Smoking Pie Padre, uh, Grandpa. Grandpa Bones? No. That's an Instagram a, guy. There was a Pipe Pops. Oh, I don't know. He don't. passed away, too. He was the first that passed away. <laughs> but in that first wave, this is like 2010, you know, ish to 20. 13, 14, like that was like your sort of first wave of YouTube presenters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I missed a couple in there uh, because I remember there's a guy who has a a, uh, a long beard <laughs> and he skateboards, I think, and he oh. he had a lot of pipe videos. I can't oh. remember his name. We got Mutton Chop too. And Mutton Chop. Mutton Chop. But like that's where I was going to break away. Like so then Stuff and Things kind of was in that early wave. And then sort of separated himself out because I think he did writing tutorials and he reviewed pens and journals and paper bags and um, and then like he sort of had a more refined style of presenting. I actually think that he used to be a musician and he probably has like been somewhat present in the arts community, which probably gives him a little bit more refinement. Mm-hmm. You know, if that's like, you know, that's his thing. Yeah. That's his brand or whatever. And then you have another step out. Like, because I always thought CHS, like, to me, CHS Pipe Friend was the original Bradley. Mm. You know? Like, sort of refined. His stuff was a little bit, like, but you could tell he was just different. Unfortunately, he, he actually took all of his stuff down and, and left uh, left the community. But, like, uh, he was a good one. Pipe Lawyer was interesting. He kind of, he like, everything with Pipe Lawyer was sort of this 
you could tell like he was a lawyer, which was pretty interesting. I liked all his videos too. And then um, his stuff's still available, I think. And then, of course, like, but then you can notice that they sort of settled into what I would call the great flock. Bradley sort of rose out. Then you have uh, Mutton Chop. He rose out, but he sort of became like what you would consider the Teddy Roosevelt <laughs> of pipe smokers, where he's he's sort of like explaining everything and kind of like telling you to pull yourself up by your own experience sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. And then, you know, I think that <clears throat> you really have, uh, of course, he, he's not making any videos right now. And then uh, you really don't have uh, Dagner Pipes was the other one I was thinking of. I think oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're good. Uh, but then you really don't have anything else that like stayed like you had those two monumental figures, you know, that everyone sort of like rallies behind. Um, and then everyone else sort of is in the same sort of flock of the YTPC where they sort of the videos are going to be pretty similar. They're not going to be like as creative necessarily as Bradley or as informative, like say as Mutton Chop. Yeah. But, but it, 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 and I think, and that's not a knock really. It's just, no, I don't think like, I'm not saying anyone's bad or good. I just think like, well, specifically with stuff and things, which is a good channel. So don't like, you know, he's just not, he's making like what he, he's making content. Yeah. That's the best way to explain it. Like produced content. Like he's trying to provide. I think an entertainment service. While some people, I think, are just trying to give information, and, and and then also I think a lot of people just like that sense of community, kinda. And I think that's where a lot of people fit. They're creating good content, but I don't necessarily think it is for the. It's not for entertainment purposes, you know. Other than the fact that they enjoy the community and we're we're gathering together as a community because there's a lot of live streams involved. Right. Like it matches got into you know towards. You know, the last few years, mm -hmm. he was a live streamer. A lot of people do that. And, um, you know... And it's like that broad appeal kind of thing, yeah. you know, is what Bradley's providing. Yeah. While everyone else seems to be sort of community-oriented, like you said. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, be, I don't know, it's, it's just thinking about just us, but... I often try to figure where do we fit in, I guess, because we really, we, we shot away from YouTube at the beginning and we really just kept it to podcast, kept it to audio and used Instagram as a way to interact. Well, I have an answer sort of like we're pipe enthusiasts who just really want to, to do something together. Yes. Yes. I don't think we have, man, this is not awful because it's going to sound like, but it's like, I don't think we got into it assuming that people would listen. <laughs> yeah, I think you and I just one. did stuff because we just like doing it with each other. So we really don't care. There's a kind of a sense of like anarchy to the way we do things anyway. And then there's sort of an anarchist kind of rebellion. I know that sounds cringy, but like to the like we don't really care if you like it or don't. We we do like it that you like it. It's yeah. sort of a contradiction. But it's not really going to change too much unless you guys say, like, we really want you to focus on this or this inside the style that we're already yeah, sort of metered to. Yep. Um, like I said, we appreciate that people listen and stuff, and we'll focus in on the stuff that we're already doing. But we're not here. I, I would almost say I'm only here because... I like hanging out with Patrick, <laughs> which I yeah. think with anything yeah. that you like that maybe becomes successful, you're not really concerned about what other people are saying or doing or how they're providing things. Um, not to say that I'm not influenced by YouTubers or pod podcasts or, you know, it's just that I'm here to do my conversation with Patrick because I like hanging out with Patrick and I like smoking a pipe and it just seemed like a really nice niche. Yeah. Cause it, cause in a way, it's it's a separate extension from that community based thing. We are doing it for the enjoyment of the community being us two, right? right. Yeah. So we're like a commune of two. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, but that's not to say that we wouldn't collab with people. There's actually a YouTube channel, and I'm gonna bring it up today in this episode of a 
I'll figure it out here in a second. Just give me a little bit. But there's a couple YouTube channels that I'd really like to correspond with. Oh, okay. Uh, there's one in particular, and I'm going to actually like his channel a lot. And um, I'll bring it up here in a second. But he does, uh, his reviews are really cool. Hmm. I, or I like his reviews. And he's a, he's a homegrown. He's a local boy. Oh, really? He's local to what? Alabama. Oh, Alabama. Yeah, North Alabama, too. Oh. Do I know this person? I don't know. I, I mean, like, I don't know if you... I'll, I'll. He does pipes? He does pipes and tobacco review. I watched his tobacco review. I was looking for something specific. I'll I'll, I'll mention it. It'll okay. kind of all make sense here in a second. But, like, I'll mention the tobacco review. I'm going to probably talk about the channel for a split second, too. But, okay. like, uh, yeah, he's a local guy. And, like, I like I like what he did. I don't know if he's doing... You know, it's kind of funny because when, when I look for a tobacco, usually I want to hear what people have to say about it sometimes. Just kind of, there are certain people that I find like a staple. Like if you go to Eldridge Pipes, anything that he says about a tobacco, I'm probably going to purchase it and go on his review mm. if it's positive. Because he, he and I have similar palates and I like what he says. Yeah. But sometimes he doesn't have the review that I'm looking for or the yeah. tobacco that I'm looking for. So I go looking around just based on the search, you know, be it like uh, Bosun Cut Plug Review or something like that. Yeah. And then this guy popped up. So I watched oh. his review, and his accent already sounded sort of similar. I was like, man, I've heard dudes like that before. And uh, and then he dropped uh, a reference to his location. Oh, okay. You, you, you said you want to we'll talk about that later on? Talk about it later. So this episode is about what's well, two things that we really want to talk about. Um. One is the blend, which is Samuel Gawa's Full Virginia Flake. Um, and the other is the smoking, I guess, characteristics, differences between a, um, you know, not a budget pipe, but a middle-of-the-road pipe, and then expensive pipes. And expensive pipes, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm smoking um, Full Virginia Flake right now in a bent... The only way I could call it is a bent Dublin shape Dunhill, which is Zach's that he's letting me uh, um, smoke for right now. Because probably as you are aware, if you follow us on Instagram, I'm a Peterson man. I've got, got a lot of Peterson. Oh, Peterson. Um, yeah. And uh, true to my roots, uh, I like, the, I got seven Petersons. I have a Boswell. I got a Bones, a Cobb, and a Clay. And, um, and so as you can tell, I don't think I spent more than a hundred dollars on any pipe that I have. So I'm sort of in that realm. I'm going to eventually branch out and get some Savinelli's because they, to me, Savinelli is the Italian Peterson and Peterson is the Irish Savinelli. They sort of are in the same boat. They offer this, I, I can't, I can't really, uh, comment on the quality of Savinelli since I haven't smoked one. But at least from the aspect of they're in the same price range, they seem to offer the same thing. It just depends on what's your style, what do you like. So this is my first smoke in a uh, in a Dunhill pipe. Uh, now, now Zach, you have a newer Dunhill to you to your collection, right? I just got I recently purchased a new one. It was on, it was a good buy. Um, it's a straight billiard, classic shape. Um, has a Cumberland stem, pretty thick walls. Um, which I like pretty good. Uh, the Dunhills I've seen in the past, they don't always have, they can be very thin pipes, which means they burn extremely hot. And if you're a sort of a speed smoker, which I can, if I get into it, I can accidentally get into a fast rhythm. Yes. And I have yeah. to watch myself. If you're a speed smoker or you can kind of sort of jump into that, a thin walled pipe can be a nightmare you know so i've shunned shied away from dunhill in the past just because i didn't really like the construction of some of their pipes however on seeing this and just picking it up and just the feel of the shape in my hand i knew that i was pretty much going to purchase this pipe okay um, it it smokes really well which as if we're going to just dive right into talking about the mechanics of smoking an expensive pipe, uh, Dunhill would be what I would consider, well, it's everyone's standard. Everyone knows that. 
Um, they're well-engineered pipes, but I don't think that they're any more well-engineered. Any, like, pipe cert past a certain price point. I think I've said this before. But about $150 to $180, you're really paying for a brand or you're paying for a designer or a um, an individual. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for what they're giving you. Um, yeah, I've heard tons of, like, you know, artisan this or whatever you know um but the material that makes up what you're smoking is only going to cost so much i mean you got to import briar and you know this is an ebonite stem so you know it's probably going to be manufactured in germany into rods and then it has to be hand carved down a little bit but a lot of this stuff is going to be machine working specifically like mass produced pipes um not like this machine like 100% but there's going to be a lot of machining involved in it um, and it's going to be mass it's going to be relatively mass produced so what you're paying for is the white dot so whenever I say that you know a Dunhill is worth probably like 150 to 180 bucks in my book but because it has the Dunhill name on it that's what makes it expensive now we're not talking about antique pipes which has a whole nother element to it we're not talking yeah. about like collectibles we're talking about just like off the shelf a relatively new uh dunhill you're you're really not going to get much <laughs> i, I want to say that and it's going to be funny because i want to kind of contradict myself a little bit you're not going to get um much more uh smoking quality out of it from say like a peterson or a salvinelli and i truly believe that and then like you could probably tell the difference between a Peterson and a Dunhill and a corn cob, uh, because a corn cob's just not going to be as much of a quality smoke as you know a well constructed briar pipe. The engineering's just there, but it kind of has to be. But like you're definitely there. The the differences between a Dunhill say and a Peterson are marginal at best. Like I can't really usually tell the difference. Now, pipe to pipe to pipe to pipe, so singular, there's going to be pipes that smoke better than other pipes. Yeah. People are going to be down with bent versus straight or straight versus bent or full bent or quarter bent. Uh, people are going to like larger bowls. People are going to like have a shape or an aesthetic that they like. That doesn't mean that like a Dunhill that you have isn't the best smoker. While it also, on the other hand, doesn't mean that the corn cob you have isn't the best smoker. And they both can be the best. It's sort of an individual journey in terms of what you're paying for though and i'm basing that simply on material without any flashy stuff so we're not talking about yeah. silver rings or gold inlay or anything like that you're paying for a name yeah well uh there's a you know there's a, a theory or there was a study done um and it, this was more in related in relation to wine and alcohol but like which I'm, I must be a different breed, but they did a study and it seemed like when people know that they're smoking a more expensive wine or not smoking, uh, drinking a more expensive wine or drinking a more expensive uh, type of whiskey, they, um, the, the, what is it? The synapses in their brain, like they enjoy it more because they know it costs more. I must be a, a different make because if I if I know the price of two things, like say there's a sixty dollar bottle of wine, now that's not that expensive. But for me, like in my house, we we buy two dollar fifty cent wine from Aldi, and that does me fine. But if I smoke a two dollar fifty cent wine from Aldi, and I smoke, I keep saying smoke. If I drink a two dollar fifty cent bottle of wine from Aldi, and then I drink a sixty dollar bottle of wine from somewhere. More than likely, I'm going to be like, eh, I'd rather pay two fifty. I'd rather pay two dollars and fifty cents and get like ten bottles of that, and still not pay only pay a third of that one bottle. That's just me though. Like I look for reasons to not spend the more money. Mm -hmm. But apparently, that's a thing that that it's it's more in the majority that knowing that it costs more, it it affects the psychology of whether or not you think you enjoy it or not, and that probably has a lot to do with why people gravitate to Dunhills or um what's the what's the one that got expensive Sir Jacobo Sir Jacobo is Sir Jacobo. expensive Costello's very expensive yeah and I um you know yeah. they're definitely still probably very 
they're still good, right? I mean, they're 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 great pipes, but there's a certain point where there's a the certain cost. point at which you're paying for yeah. a name, and yeah. that's what that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that any of these pipes are. It would be. It's impossible to say that the pipe is bad. Yes, yeah. because no pipe smoker is the same. No, no. I can't 100% sit um, and smoke the same exact pipe and the same exact tobacco as Patrick and get the same experience. Mm-mm. Because no. I'm just going to have a, just on cadence alone, even if we were genetically identical, but we had different rhythms, you're, you're, I'm yeah. going to have a different smoking experience, period. And whatever you ate last will be different than what I ate last or whatever you're or what I'm drinking at the moment. Yes. All that's going to play a factor in it. And so, uh, and the, the thing is, is like, ah, like my opinion is enjoy what you're smoking and enjoy what you're smoking it out of. Exactly. As long as you love it, then anything that I say is irrelevant. But if you are concerned as a pipe smoker that you need uh, a premium made pipe, I just, well, I definitely, if you if you, if you have it in your mind to get a brand and get it, you know, I would never steer anyone away. But if you're, if you have it in your mind to get a luxury brand, yeah, right, but you don't know where to go, I, I wouldn't, and you were to ask my opinion, I wouldn't point you in the direction of Dunhill. Yeah. I think that there are better premium brands, specifically Costello or Kaviki. Um, Italian pipes that uh, are superior and and that's just on a mass produced level I mean if you were talking about like artisans pipes I'd send you uh, to Eldridge pipes he makes a quality pipe that's amazing and it looks amazing and it smokes amazing um, or, well would Boswell be in that or would Boswell he be a little bit lower he's maybe? a little lower I mean but like Boswell has a reasonable uh set up and price range too i mean like you're not you're not going to boswell i think charge bases on the size of briar which is interesting but mm-hmm. like because I mean, you'll see his pipes go like i think he sold some for 500 bucks they're also bigger than my face yeah like yeah you know, they're huge. So you have that kind of thing which is different mm-hmm. boswell is sort of like what i would consider like uh also sort of the everyman pipe smoker like it's quality it's going to last you it's not going to break it's, you're really getting like bang for your buck yeah it's like if 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 you're a peterson savinelli guy but you want something a little bit more artisan but you don't want to really go any higher in price right relatively you're a boswell guy like right. for me like you know like i said i, I don't think i've spent over 100 on any of my pipes or around 100 right well that nose warmer that i got from him which is a smaller pipe it was a hundred dollars, so it was, it was a relatively good, good, yeah. you know. And be sure you know that like markets change, prices fluctuate. Yeah, yeah. So you know there is that whole thing in there, but um, you know if you can look past that, you, you'll be all right. Like yeah. But with uh, like mass produced, like I said, like I think you're gonna have better luck with Costello and Soyakabo and Kabiki. I think they have better quality control measures than say like Dunhill like newer Dunhill not that they smoke bad this yeah. pipe what I was going to say earlier that contradicts me is I think this is one of the best smoking pipes that I have and it's a Dunhill but that is not characteristic of every Dunhill yeah or well, you have two Dunhills right what would you say about the one I'm smoking now I think it's thin walled and I don't think the mechanics on it are as good as this one so just Dunhill to Dunhill and they're both relatively new I think that one's from the 80s and this one is like a 2000 something okay um but like that's not, you know, that might not be from the 80s. That might be from the 2000s as well. But, like, I can't remember off the top of my head. Seem, 80s seem to pop out, but I don't know why. Well, the point that I'm trying yeah. to make is is yeah. that, like, I find uh, Les Woods pipes to be mm-hmm. superior to Dunhill. Um, Ashton is on the same level, cheaper. And then, yeah, Fern Down and Les Woods. Sorry, they're the same mm-hmm. brand. Mm-hmm. Uh I think Les Woods is the, the guy. Anyway, Fern Down pipes are better in terms of British pipes. I like them better. Like, in terms of mass, more mass produced coming from that same line. And then an old Sassini, mm-hmm. which usually is always going to be cheaper, is a quality smoke. Like, I have not had a bad Sassini pipe uh, ever. Yeah. 
sometimes there is this like kind of weird thing with a pipe where you have to sort of find the tobacco that you want and what i mean by that is find tobacco that doesn't mean flavoring of course some people will marry up their pipes to say a certain blend or a certain tobacco type or whatever what i'm talking about is like finding your tobacco is sort of finding what it smokes best with some pipes can smoke really well with a wet tobacco and some just are awful at it uh you really need a dry tobacco i have one sassini pipe that has given me trouble for years until i started smoking um uh bruyere uh no that's not it it's a what is that early love that i like so oh much? uh san juan yeah san juan yeah so i started smoking uh some wa in it and it is it's naturally dry like bone daddy dry like crazy dry yeah and it smokes that blend perfectly better than any other pipe that i own because i've smoked some one other things but that pipe felt like it was married to that tobacco mm. I ended up dedicating that pipe just to some because it smoked it so well it struggled with anything else that was moist you know and you yeah. sort of have to and that was a peculiar pipe because it's like a hybrid pipe. It looks like a billiard Dublin, like, saddle bit. Like, it's the cra- that's a crazy pipe. I love it, but it's a really strange pipe. And I guess with that, so many peculiarities, it would make sense they would pick the most peculiar burly to ma- pair up mm. with. But there is some, there's things like that. But, like, once again, that's you finding. The explore. I mean, I think the purchasing and exploration of a pipe is all in the fun. You see the pipe that you like and you love it. Um, because that's the aesthetic part that's going to bring you pleasure. Yeah. And you want it to look good. But then there is sort of a journey to figure out what that pipe accepts. Because pipes, like, not to, like, anthropomorphize them or anything like that, uh, but they do have these weird characteristics, almost like individual qualities that you have to sort of yeah. suss out. Well, yeah, I mean, going back to what you said earlier about, um, you know, from pipe to pipe to pipe, even within a brand, right? So, like I said, I have multiple Petersons, but there are definitely ones that rise above and ones that don't. Um, you know, the for me, uh, usually a bigger bowl is a better is a better smoker for me. Uh, but that's not always the case, right? But that just sort of seems to be the pattern. Um, another thing, too, I mean, you're talking about like drier <coughs> blends. Um, I think a, a, a video that Stuff and Things did about black house was that it purposely comes drier because russell felt that it smokes better drier mm. so that's an interesting thing too so you know i mean it, it's sort of a segue sort of not really but um i'll say you know smoking this pipe i've already smoked an, another bowl with it and my first thing was it seemed to not get as wet as sometimes i have with my peterson's um however the second bowl i got it got a little wet Mm -hmm. so i can't really now i can't really say that 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 is a difference maker because i've had you know i've smoked you know a peterson one of my petersons in it it smoked dry perfect and then the next day it gets a little wet sometimes remember you also just smoked it too so like jumping back in might be something yeah definitely consider not to contradict patrick because I have pipes that I can smoke on all day long without a problem. And for those who say that, like, you can't just smoke a pipe um, you know, more than once or whatever, mm-hmm. I don't believe that. Um, really? I think you can, I think it's wise to rotate your pipes because it's like having two pair of shoes and rotating them. They're going to last longer just because of wear and tear, period. That's all there is to it. Yeah. However, with a pipe, I mean, yeah, you can smoke it for a full day and it's going to be fine. You know, I mean, you're not, like, blow-torching it. You should let it rest, of course. But, you know, uh, and everyone has their own... I mean, of course, that's what you like, but, like, you shouldn't shy away from smoking a a pipe multiple times during the day. And I've started doing that a little bit. Well, I don't... Usually, rule of thumb for me, I don't smoke more than one bowl a day. So, if I I know in my head that I want to get two blends in in a day it'll be the same pipe but i'll smoke like a half a bowl and then let it rest maybe 30 minutes or so turn it upside down let it lay like that let it air, sort of air out and then 
smoke another blend, half bowl. Uh, I'm, I'm saying you could do a full bowl, but just me personally, I, I usually don't go past one bowl a day. Um, and yeah, but so because of that, I sort of lend to the, you know, I, I don't, I don't smoke, you know, one more than a day in a mm -hmm. day in a row because I usually <laughs> only smoke one bowl. If I was a multiple bowl smoker, yeah, I mean, just smoke. There, there's no reason to smoke unless, you know, I don't know, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> I think that's sort of what we're trying to get to is that if you are happy smoking premium pipes and you're happy with the price, fine. But if you're a little bit more conscious minded about your money, like I am, um, you know, I, don't get bogged down. Don't get worried that, you know, all these other, you see all these other people smoking Dunhills and Costellos and, and Kabikis and all this stuff. And, and if, if you, all you have is seven LA's pizza, if all you got is corn cobs, if all you got seven LA seconds or, you know, series threes or Morgan bone pipes, um, it's as long as you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't think you should get bogged into the details, but it is fun to compare and try to con if you have the if you uh, have the if you have the means and the availability yeah. to make comparisons, it's good. Find a friend like I did who has some some Dunhills and, <laughs> and Sir Yakubos and and uh, you know bum them off him. <laughs> and then, like you know, most pipe smokers are not going to be. You know what? Don't let me say that. I actually don't know as many pipe smokers as I used to. Really, and I don't know if the if everything's changed, and especially with COVID now, people probably don't like sharing. Yeah, so that might be an issue, too. But in my experience, like, um, if you, especially if if I see you with a pipe and then you come and you address me and I have a pipe, um, whatever I've got on me, you're going to be allowed to take with you, like mm. not like permanently, but like tobacco. I'm definitely just going to be like, yeah, you want some? Yeah. All right, get you some. You know, like, um. Yeah. I wouldn't, I'm not going to give away a pipe or, but like, uh, but like I'm going, you know, like we're very share oriented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the great things about this community. And if you take anything away from this episode, I don't know if we said it enough. We really enjoy the community. It's just, you, sometimes you like to talk about it. You like to talk about the community, right? Well, I think I'm a lurker too. You know, yes. I don't think people know that I exist, which is fine. You know, I mean, I think that there's a there's a like a small contingency of our of our people, like the Pipecast people who listen to us regularly and enjoy what we do. Um, but like, I don't think the YTPC or like pipe smokers at large really are aware of Pipecast. No, and I'm fine with that. Not. But I'm not critiquing it either. I think it's a good community. But I'm not also putting myself out there. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like I said, at the end of the day. We're having fun. We hope everybody else is having fun, and it's just an enjoyable time. I mean, any time you're smoking a pipe is a good time, no matter what the world is doing. You know, what whatever's happening in the world, if you can take, if you have the luxury and the ability to take some time to smoke a pipe, you know, and you know, if you can't be physically with someone, you know, if you want to smoke a pipe and you know, do like a video chat or just talking on the phone. A lot of times me and Zach will call each other and we'll just talk while we smoke. It's no big deal. But if you can do that, it's, it's a, you know, it's a blessing, I guess, in a way. It's just, well, it's a, good to know that you have other similar minded people in your hobby out there that you can talk to or express like what you like and what you don't like or whatever. As long, you know, as long as the community is like cordial, I think that's yeah, fine. Because there's a fine line between, a community that, that has a common interest and then a community that all, like, all their interests are the exact same and you've, like, heard a sheep. And I think the pipe community is definitely the antithesis of sheep people. We all have a common thing that we like, which is pipes and pipe tobacco. But we all present it differently. We present it differently and we all are open-minded to everybody's opinions. It, I'm not trying to say opinions in politics and opinions in religion, but I'm I am saying that, but I'm also saying opinions in different blends because there's enough variety in right. pipe tobacco and pipe makers and pipe shapes that, like, I don't know, it's just, it's never ending, you know. And your palate's never ending in a change sense. Yeah. I mean, just like my wintering with aromatics is peculiar to me in general. Yes. Um, also, I've favored Latakia blends and 
distanced myself from them in recent years to favor Burley and Virginia and Parikh blends. Hmm. So, you know, everything changes. And yeah. You're not, like, that's the one thing, like, you can't really be a staunch... You can be. Actually, I'm jealous of people who are, like, staunch, like, I have five blends that I love, and that's all smoke. <laughs> that's uh, what I I'm wish I could <laughs> sort of do something like that, but I can't. I'm ever-changing, ever-evolving. My palate's always in kind of a flux yeah. state, and, it, you know, based on how I... My impression of something could always be different year to year, you know? Yeah. I definitely would not have pushed aromatics as heavily, I think, five years ago. Um... I probably would have been in the camp that's just like, you really don't need to be smoking aromatics, but that's based really on what you get at a tobacconist, at a store. Yes. Um, that really doesn't, never covered Lakeland, you know, but I wasn't also smoking Lakeland. I wasn't really, yeah. I wasn't, you know, it's sort of like one of those things where you'd read a review about a Lakeland blend and that wouldn't turn me off to it. As a matter of fact, it would be maybe more curious when people are like, it tastes like soap. I'm like, why would that even be a thing? <laughs> so of course i just order it just to kind of get my head wrapped around it turns out to me it's not very soapy yeah you know but i also don't get that soapy flavor from uh it starts it's not sriracha it's um what that, that green uh plant that you put on like mexican dishes and thai dishes cilantro and cilantro I, I love, don't get soapy flavors from cilantro. I love either. cilantro. Cilantro is like my favorite herb mm. or herb or whatever. So like, you know, if you like everyone's palate's going to be different. Yeah. I know some people say that like squadron and you got this a lot when you smoked McClellan blends had a very ketchup vinegar flavor yeah. to it. And I didn't always catch that. You I, could kind of hear it, smell it when you open the tin yeah. and get that like tin aroma, but you wouldn't all, I wouldn't always smoke it and be like this tastes like ketchup. Yeah. That's sort of like with McBaron. You get a lot of barbecue smells at the beginning. Or on the tin, though, for me. Barbecue sauce, kind of. But, uh, And I think that's probably a topping decision that someone made that I'm just not aware of what they're topping it with or casing it with. Yeah, it could be. could be. Um, another little sort of behind-the-scenes kind of thing, and if you've been following Instagram, you might have caught this. But, like, so Zach, like he said, he's a... A revolving door of blends always something new always something i mean if it wasn't for that i wouldn't have found the patience of dr silence or you know or anything like that so it's, it's good for that but for me because even though i've been smoking off and on for about two years i still am on the search for go-to blends because i don't know there's a weird thing with me where it's that idea that actually too much choice limits your choice like too much choice limits freedom in a way like uh the example i heard was <laughs> it does <laughs> okay Let's... yeah that's something there <laughs> okay so like if you go say you say you, you want some salad dressing right yeah and you say you've always gravitated to ranch as your go-to right and then you you go to the supermarket and you go down the salad dressing aisle there is cucumber ranch, there's buttermilk ranch, there's ranch sriracha, there's all these different flavors, and you got all these different types of Italian, all these different kinds of Thousand Island, French, all. there's so many choices, a lot of times people get overwhelmed and just go to their go-to, they grab, they gravitate to their go-to, they don't adventure out because there's too much to try, mm -hmm. and while I'm not on that spectrum, I'm definitely, I'm not on the spectrum of, I'm only going to grab go-to's. But I'm also not on the spectrum of I'm going to try everything out there. Mm -hmm. With tobacco, there's so much going on. And for me being still a very new pipe smoker, in my in my head, I still am. Um, I don't. There's too much. I need to. I need to get. I need to build a base. To then build the reference points for flavors, and then I can start. I can feel comfortable enough to be like. Oh, Zach, you got this random blend I never heard of. Let me try it. Mm -hmm. And then I can appreciate it because I have built my pattern up. I'm doing the same thing right now with whiskey. I'm going through, you know, having a little bit. I wouldn't even call it a shot. It's just a little bit of whiskey. I change it up. I got some Irish whiskey. I got some scotch. I got some rye. Uh, I need to go get a bourbon. And 
right now I'm just drinking like a little bit every night to get through the proof because, you know, when you're, you know, for me, not being a regular whiskey drinker, the proof is all I get right now. But once you get past that br proof, you can start to suss out those flavors, which is actually is helping me out in my pipe smoking. So I'm sort of combining this up because I'm trying to find my go-tos. And then once I get my go-tos and I'm on them for a year or two, then I can at least, you know, start to adventure out a little bit. And because, you know, with the deeming reg regulations coming up, I sort of just want to get some go-tos that I know are going to be there for a while. And, you know, things will come and go. But like, um, so like right now, you know, Virginia, uh, I was on a straight Virginia kick. I was, I smoked Samuel Galloway full Virginia. I smoked Dunhill, now Peterson Flake. Right. And then uh, uh, McBaron, HH Pure Virginia. I loved all three of them. But guess what? Samuel Galloway is hard to get sometimes. It's not regularly available. Guess what is regularly available now? Peterson Flake and HH Pure Virginia. But will HH Pure Virginia stay? Don't know because of the, the, the deeming regulations. Maybe McBaron will cut it. I don't think they will. McBaron's a pretty big blend, pretty big blender. Or so, not blender, but whatever. Um, they, it'll probably stay. But, you know, so I smoked them all and I figured it out. I I think I like Dunhill the best. Well, I like Gawa. I like Full Virginia Flake the best. But Peterson's, Peterson's really good. It's a little bit brighter. But I, I was saying all that to sort of say, um, I got a little sidetracked there. Because I'm young in it, I can't really, the differences are marginal, right? Mm -hmm. So the difference from Full Virginia Flake to Peterson Flake to HH Pure Virginia, there are differences, but there's not enough that I can really discern it. Um you know, I, I think we talked about it in previous episodes. That, that's how I feel about um, Artisan's Blend and Nightcap uh, and those those heavier. There's not enough really to tell. Like, I like Nightcap, but I like Artisan's Blend just a hair more. So I'm looking at Artisan's. And it's cheaper. It's, you know, it, it not real, not a lot cheaper, but it is cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm on that journey of getting those go-tos. Mm -hmm. And so y'all will be in for that now this review is on samuel gawa uh full virginia flake but i think i have already determined i'm gonna go peterson flake okay. it's a little bit brighter in its smoke like its taste it's i don't know it we'll get into it later probably one day but we guess we probably need to get into full virginia flake right now okay. yeah. <laughs> if you want to we've been we've been going on and on for a while uh so but I stopped lifting in after you started getting all communist, so. <laughs> I don't know. I heard tobacco and whiskey. Those are the only words that I caught in that. Talking. That felt English. Talking. Everything communist. else sounded like sort of like Soviet Russian speak. I don't know. But anyway, I guess Carl Marx and I here are going to talk about full Virginia flakes since he feels like <laughs> limiting choice is like, you know, the way forward for no. the community. I know this is all in jest, but let me clarify. Let Marks? me let me clarify to the listeners that aren't so gung ho on being a thorn in my side. Look, <laughs> I wasn't saying that's how things should be. Let me just make sure I clear my cl clarify here. There's just a part of the ment of the human mind that relates to that. That mm -hmm. sometimes choice sometimes overwhelms people. I think. I mean, you can even see it like, let's even go to like football, right? There's college football and then there's like, well, there's high school football, there's college football and there's pro football, right? High school football, there are millions of schools out there that play high school football, right? And if you were into high school football, you wouldn't keep up with all of them because you can't. You can't do it. You, uh, you know, you would limit it to like your area, right? So in our area, there's like, I think six schools that play football, six, seven, eight schools, just in this county. And, uh, oh. Uh, and so, um, it's easy to, that's sort of easy to keep up with, right? Mm -hmm. College football, college football, there's like 120, 130 top tier programs. Well, I wouldn't say they're all top tier, but they're, they make up the top level. Well, you know, whatever. But then you get to pro. Guess how many teams there are in pro? 
Do you know? No. 32. That's a lot easier than keeping with 130. So, like, there, even to that extent, that example, it is easier to digest. Now, it's one of these first world problems. It's easy to digest anything, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're, like, somebody who's trying to keep up with stats or maybe you're doing a podcast where you're talking about football and sports, it's a little bit easier to talk about a league that only has 32 teams. It's easier to grasp all that than it is to talk about an entire division that has 132 130, whatever. So you're not talking about like a revolution of what you're talking about, like a, a great leap forward. <laughs> no. So you, you transition from Marxist to Leninist to Maoist. So you're saying you want to kill a bunch of high schoolers. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, we need to limit the number of high school programs by, by killing, killing students. So that's exactly hmm. what I'm saying. No, but for real, yeah, like, like <laughs> I love unlimited choice. It is, you know, statistically proven that a lot of the population is fine with a limited number of, of, of choice. And, again, I use the example of salad dressing. So, like, you know, it's, it's it, it doesn't matter. So you're against, I, I, I get what you're saying. You, so you're, <clears throat> you're against the free market. No, I'm just... Okay, no, 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 no. I would actually counter your argument. I would counter your argument. You ready for this? Yeah. I am so capitalist that I understand the human mind that I'm... If I owned a salad dressing company, I'd only make two versions. I'd make a ranch and a thousand dollars. And guess what? I'd probably sell more than somebody who makes a ranch, a buttermilk ranch, a cucumber ranch, a sriracha ranch. I'd probably make more money. Hmm. Because I know the vast majority of people get overwhelmed by it get overwhelmed by too much choice. Okay. But I can sort of see how I could see this this is getting very conspiracy. I could see somebody with an agenda to have a communist overthrow would use that that article or that it was an NPR thing that I listened to so if that tells you anything could use that to sort of supplant those ideas on salad dressing to then evolve into so you, you had trickle down econo- economics. You got trickle up socialism. The idea of it it, it starts in so- salad dressing, and people get well. Yeah, we don't need that many salad dressings. Do we really need this many companies out there that sell salad dressings? Should we limit it? Should we put a regulation on the the market? I can see that. And again, I'm not saying that. I was more interested in the human nature of it. Anything that has to do with how human nature brains work, like I don't know if anybody listens to Dave Ramsey. He's a tennis a guy up in Tennessee who does, you know, a radio show where he, he um, talks about how to save money and how to get out of debt and things like that. And he's the first one to tell you, like, mathematically, right, to get out of debt the fastest, you pay off the loan that has the highest interest. That's common mathematical sense. But humans don't work that way. If you more times than not, statistically, if you want to get out of debt, pay the smallest loan off first. Don't even look at interest. Look at your smallest loan because, say, you have a hundred dollar loan, and then after that you got all these other loans. You pay the hundred dollar off. It in your head that's a victory. See, if you start with the first one, say you got a fifty thousand dollar loan mm-hmm. that's at the highest interest, you're going to be paying on the fifty thousand for a long time, okay. and you're never going to see any results. You're not going to have that snowball. So if you if you pay off the hundred dollar one, that little bit of money you were using to pay off the hundred each month, you apply that to the next one. It's that snowball effect. But I say that because it's it's where math works, but it, humans mess things up. The way our mind works. Mm-hmm. I'm, okay, y'all can't see this, but I know Zach is going along with this. But he's in his head. He's concocting some way to like turn this on me and make me look like a communist or something. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this because he just ruined two jokes that I had. And I was like, well, uh, Comrade Stalin and Thousand Iron Curtain Dressing coming to a market near you in 2022. That's, that was my last joke. And I was like trying to get, like I was trying to figure out Comrade Stalin and Iron Curtain and how to blend that pun. And that's what I came up with. And he could see my eyes light up because... My eyes lit up as soon as I figured out that combination. And then he's like, y'all can't see it right now, but he is concocting a 
<laughs> yeah, so that was going to be my final little comment to kind of move us into a review of Full Virginia. But Comrade Stalin and Thousand Iron Curtain Dressing coming to a supermarket near you soon. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Patrick Ilyinovich Ulyanov. So an hour later, we're going to get into Full Virginia Flake. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why don't you kick it off? All right, I'll go ahead and just tell you, um, again, I've said this up before, when it comes to Virginia's, I, I don't necessarily get the grassy hay thing that a lot of people do. I get a lot of toasted uh, uh, toasted oats kind of flavors, and Full Virginia Flake is the epitome of that. It's just a super toasty, nice blend, and I think, in, in sort of alluding to the title of this episode, No Nonsense. It is a no-nonsense blend. It is straightforward. It is what it is. It's Virginia. But that's not to knock it because it is still, to me, very full-bodied. There's a lot going on. Like, no, there's not a lot going on, but there's so much of that one-note flavor that I I love it. Like, I, I almost akin it to a heavy English. It's just, it's just all that toasty note, and it's just very comforting. Mm-hmm. I, I have been gravitating to Virginia's this winter um, and it's I don't know there's sometimes you'll get a little bit of sourness here and there a little bit of tang uh, but with with full Virginia flake it's just I don't know I don't know what they do over there at Goweth but it I don't know it's it's a really good blend and like if it was more readily available if it was as available as Dunhill flake or or Pure Virginia for McBaron. Right. I don't see why you would ever get another Virginia. Like, like now, granted, I haven't had Best Brown, but, you know, I, I'm just going off of what's, a, I guess, a little bit more available, and that's the full Virginia, the standard, I guess. So, I don't know. I, if you can, I, if you like straight Virginias, to me, and you find it on your sh- on the shelf somewhere, or you get a notification from an online retailer that says they're in, you should grab some. You should always have some available because it is, I don't know, it's, it's really good. It, like I said, I can't do it justice because I'm, <laughs> I'm still building up my, my point of references, but it's good. Yeah, so full Virginia for me. Okay, let's talk about Virginias for a second. So any type of straight Virginia for me has always been um, kind of a nuisance. And the reason for that is because I get some of the worst tongue bite from Virginia blends, straight Virginia blends that you could possibly get. I can barely even smoke Orlix or uh, things that are blended with a Kentucky because just the Virginia, I don't know what it is, the alkali buildup or tongue steaming, whatever it is, I mean, uh, Virginia will really rock the boat with me. And it takes me a while. I'll smoke a blend and then like, you know, I basically just don't smoke for a couple of days as I sort of rest my tongue because it's just so volatile for my tongue. Now, that said, that's Virginia. That's the way Virginia has always been for me. Even full Virginia flake until recently, which is odd. The last time I smoked full Virginia because Patrick's been on his quest through Virginia. He asked me if we wanted to do a review of full Virginia flake. I said, sure. Let's go for it. Um, I smoked full Virginia Flake, even though I told Patrick, I was like, I really don't do Virginias anymore just because they just mess me up. Um, but the, I smoked full Virginia Flake, and it was fun. It was weird. Um, it's very tangy. Um, the way Galwith, uh, Samuel Galwith makes tobacco is just exquisite. I don't think you really are going to get too much that's going to be an issue. You're not going to have a lot of quality control issues or anything like that. They've been doing it for a very long time and all of the tobacco is amazing. And that includes Full Virginia Flake. It's tangy, it's citrusy, it has some grass notes that I taste. Um, If you let Full Virginia sit for a while before opening it, I'm talking about cellaring it. It cellars extremely well. I've had some cellared and I've tried it, and it's good. Um, but if you open it, and you let, you should probably open it and let it dry just a little bit. I mm-hmm. think that you you want it to be sort of a medium moisture, not too moist out of the tin, and not not like bone dry. It's not going to really perform well bone dry. But that middle where it's just got that perfect content. The way I always check it is if you take some tobacco. These are flakes. 
and you break them out into what could look like a kind of a general ribbon cut. Roll it into a ball and pinch it. What you're looking for is if, if you pinch it and it sort of retains the pinch shape, it's probably too moist. If you mm. pinch it and it sort of immediately sort of springs back, that's about dead perfect. And then if you pinch it and it crumbles into dust, then it's too dry. <laughs> so those are, the, you know, I do, I don't do a pinch test very often anymore. Usually I can just pull a tobacco out of a pouch. I've been smoking for a long time and I can just sort of tell how I need to smoke it because I've smoked wet, I've smoked dry. You know, you sort of kind of learn along the way and then you sort of know. But full Virginia and a lot of the Galwick blends, I still do a pinch test just because there is a certain amount of moisture content that they have that can be a headache to deal with. But if you let it sit out for, I think, take two flakes, let them sit for 15 minutes in flake form, and then you do a pinch test, if it's still a little moist, give it two to three more minutes on a paper towel, and then smoke it, and you should be fine. And I usually do a fold and stuff method. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of giving you the, the mechanics of the way I smoke it, and then what you're looking for. Then, full Virginia, it really just comes into its own, especially halfway into the bowl. I didn't get tongue bite this time, which is interesting. Yeah. I'm hoping that's not a rarity. I'm hoping that I can continue to smoke um, full Virginia flake. And Virginia's in general, I'm hoping maybe my tongue has like come around and seen the air of its ways. But Virginia, for me, has always been a very summery smoke. Um, you'll catch me smoking like grouse more and full Virginia flake or... Most of the Virginias that I smoke, even like um, uh, Golden Slice uh, by um, Orlick, Reiner, Reiner mm. Golden Slice. Uh, Orlick is another one, but I don't smoke Orlick as much anymore. And then if you have, well, in Orlick's case, yes, in the summer, because it's got a light touch of Perique. And it's light enough that you can still enjoy it. I really don't like Perique except in the fall. Okay. If I can help it. I have a very seasonal palate. Granted, we have discussed on this podcast, and like I've been turning a blind eye to my seasons because usually I smoke aromatics and Virginias and things in the summer um, because I feel like they're lighter and more interesting to smoke in the summer, and until it becomes like dog day summer, and then I usually switch over to cigars. Mm. Um, and I usually don't smoke aromatics in the winter, and here I'm smoking them in the yeah. winter. I would say I've heard recently. I don't know. Do you have any filtered pipe? No. I heard that, um, well, at least the pipe nook, Eddie Gray, he, he smokes filtered pipes pretty much exclusively because he had such an issue with tongue bite. And it seems to have quelled that. So I wondered if you if you went out and got you a relatively cheap filter pipe and you tried that with your, you smoked a filter with your Virginias. I wonder if that would quell that. Well, the best way to, that, that I've found, you're right, and I will try it, mm -hmm. just so you know. If I can find a if I can find some sort of filter bite. But the best way to combat, in my opinion, tongue bite, there's two ways. One is not readily available to everyone. Uh, one is to age your tobacco. Yeah. It mellows it. For some reason, it always works. Anytime I smoke aged tobacco, I never get tongue bite, period. Yeah. Second way, and I'm talking about when I say age, year, two years, you're probably going to be good. Of course, who wants to buy 10 and wait two years to smoke it? You know. Yeah. The second way that I found it, well, it's really three. I guess the second way is just tough it out, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> but that's not really a. That's not really you know. You smoke a bowl and then you don't smoke for like three or four days and then yeah. you can smoke again. I mean, it's a and, chemical and it, reaction, right? I mean, it's not good for your tongue, <laughs> right? And then the final way is that I find that Perique negates the alkali buildup in Virginia. So if you can just smoke a Virginia Perique, it'll combat it. Yeah. Okay. Because it like has a neutral pH or something, and it I swear uh, it kills it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. There's another way I uh, I saw Eddie Gray talk about. There's like these little crystals that you can pour in the bottom of your bowl. If say if you don't have a filter pipe, you can pour these little crystals in the bottom, just like two or three or four, and then dump the tobacco on top, and they do the same thing as Perique in a way. They neutralize they neutralize the pH mm. in the in the blend. Because I usually don't get a lot of tongue bite. Um, I do a little bit, like, especially when, when I chief on it, right? And, I, and I'm going, 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 going mm -hmm. like a train. But I don't do that a lot. Like, most of the time, my, bri my, my briars don't get too hot on me. Which is good. That's good. Because smoking a briar too hot will age it. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, just because it's fire. It's heat on wood. Granted, yeah. like, <laughs> get a block of briar, punch it, or try to carve it with a knife. You'll realize why. 
it is the preferred mm. uh, wooden material to smoke out of because it is robust. Mm. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, um, I would also say. Um, oh heck, I I think I done lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, you talking about getting a filter pipe again, a plug for the pipe nook. I think you can get like uh, 7LE Series 3 unfinished pipes that, you know, they sort of have that bones look to them. Yep. Most all his are are filtered for like $50, $60. So. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's really get, good. But, um, but yeah, so, yeah, I think for, for Virginia is very, I mean, if you can get it, get it. I mean, if, if you, if you like straight Virginias and stuff like that, yeah. it's a really nice blend. And then I've smoked it both rubbed out and fold and stuff and they it, it performs well uh both ways um most definitely yeah it's good uh, um it's a it's a really good blend um but well i don't I'm know about the, you yeah i'm at the bottom of mine so this is a good long one well we're going to be more consistent we promise i know that covid has been creating headaches for everyone so hopefully we can sort of circumvent these sort of running issues and have Maybe a couple episodes in the hole. That way Patrick or I can just deliver them uh, if we have another circumstance like this. Yeah. Definitely be watching YouTube. We're going to be posting up some videos if you're curious to see one, our faces, and two, just uh, some different content. And, uh, you know, I guess yeah. kind of keep your ear dead to the ground on Instagram. We might be doing some other things yeah. in the near future that might interest people. And, and just uh, before we close out, I want to say we recently got to, like, we got over the thousand follower hurdle. I think we're at twelve hundred right now. So for Instagram, yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the overlap is between people who actually listen to the to the podcast and people who follow us on Instagram, but um, you know, if you do both, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we always like hearing from everybody. So you know, yeah, we we get a lot of like messages. You know, uh, well, not a lot, but. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Like, it's cool. Like, and we like helping. So we're always available. Yeah. You know, usually, I actually took a step back from social media in general, but we kept the podcast Instagram yeah. running. Uh, but my personal social media platforms are all kind of disbanded. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, when we'll get questions that range from anything. And, you know, it could be, uh, what blends do you recommend? What you know, could be pipe related, like, you know, like things like that. So if you have any questions for us, feel free to message us on Instagram or email us. You, um, I think it's pipecast256 at gmail.com. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yes, we, we look forward to hearing from you. But until uh, the next full episode, we hope you have enjoyed this smoke. Yes, sir. You have a good one.